Well, among the many things going on at Performance Classics at the moment, which includes two BSA A65 engines alone in pieces, um, I've also been working on a Royal Enfield Bullet 500 crank, uh, the engine of which came from a bike which belongs to uh, Jackie Furno, who's uh, written a book on her travels, and this particular engine, apparently I'm told, has done 80,000 miles and it was time for a new big end or at least a check over um, before she racks up any more miles on it because I think there's another long distance uh, run or two planned as far as I know. Um, anyway, I split the crank, there was no uh, perceptible play in the big end anyway and the crank pin certainly had many more miles left in it, there's just the faintest sort of signs of very very light wear that you can just about feel if you run your finger or thumbnail across there but you've got to be less than a thousandth of an inch wear <clears throat> and also the floating bush um, when this checked out against the brand new one which I've now put in there's absolutely no difference in fit between this one with 80,000 miles on it and the brand new one um, but anyway this peace of mind more than anything and uh, the new crank pin and floating bush are fitted here in this crank um, along with the original conrod, the hard eye of which was in perfect condition so um, it's all back together now and I've trued it. The uh, one remaining thing I've got to do is just put the uh, little cheese head locking screw in there for the crank pin nut, I'll do that in a moment. Um, so we'll give it a spin and have a look. Now as usual this clock records thousandths of an inch so between a naught and a five would be five thousandths of an inch and this one is metric and a full revolution of the clock face is a millimeter but from one number from a naught to the five is oh sorry from a naught to the ten is actually point one of a millimeter or four thousandths of an inch so from one number to the next is four thousandths of an inch on this one, one number to the next is five thousandths of an inch on that clock. So it's pretty comparable as far as movement of the needles is going to go. Let's give the crank a spin and see what we've got. Right, well, we've got both clocks there on zero at the same time. As I move, start moving the crank round, the needles rise on the faces of the clocks. We get up to at most three thousandths of an inch on that one. Likewise, we're probably under three thousandths of an inch on that one there. As from one number to the next would be four thousandths of an inch. So, the beauty of this is that both needles are rising and falling at the same time. So when those main shafts are supported in the main bearings, the high and low spots on those clock faces coincide with each other at the same point of rotation is actually going to be to all intents and purposes just about no run out at all if the uh, needles on the clock faces were moving in opposite directions at the same time as each other that would be a worry and that would be true run out but this one cancels the other one out say we've got three thousandths of an inch there and we're under well under four thousandths of an inch on that one probably closer to three three from three is naught so I'm very happy indeed with that so I'll put that uh, locking screw in for the uh, crank pin nut next and uh, this one will be ready to go back into its engine and uh, get a bike running and ready for lots of miles again and uh, hopefully without any need for attention for a very long time to come